how to heal emotional abuse. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, last week I covered two topics that got incredible feedback, shame and emotional abuse in relationships. As a matter of fact, the emotional abuse was my most popular podcast in about four months. Now, on that particular podcast, I mentioned some of the signs that allow you to realize that you're actually in an abusive relationship. But the feedback acknowledges that this abuse is in an area that's of major concern for a lot of people right now. That's why today it made sense to address how to heal if you're in this situation and getting you to a place of true self-love and making sure you will never entertain anyone that has these traits or recognizing them and making the necessary adjustments, including you, if you're the person that's abusing yourself or others. Now, I know a lot of this realization has come into place because of the COVID environment and people staying at home. More people are actually spending time with their partner and getting the opportunity, if you want to call it that, to see their partner in a way that they haven't in the past. For most, work, life, and kids kept them busy, so they didn't take the necessary time to evaluate what was actually taking place in their relationship, which is a problem waiting to happen. Now, I've had many divorce attorneys that have made the comment that when things go back to normal, they are expecting the highest number of divorces ever. Wow. And unfortunately, I know that's going to be true. Now, I hope you hear me out and make sure that you don't become one of them. Now, first, let's come to an understanding that abuse is not love. Now, if you've been following me, you know I believe love is accepting a person, place, or thing just the way it is. I didn't say agree with. I said accept. In other words, I accept you as you are. But if I disagree with, with, with the way you live and, and stand with this particular conversation, the way you treat me, then we will correct the treatment or we will part ways. Now, in the context of this conversation, some people use the word love to mean how much you actually care for them. So that's why I want to make clear to people that believe in that particular thought process that if you have a partner that abuses you and they try to justify it by saying they love you, know that that comment is not true. I've had women tell me that are physically abused, they'll say, he really loves me. They'll even take the blame for receiving the abuse. Let me repeat, abuse is not love, and no one is justified by putting their hands on you. Now, while I'm on this subject, this holds true for ladies also. As a society, we're always saying a man should never hit a woman. I will say this back to women and to society. A woman should never hit a man either. We cannot act like it is okay for women to abuse men and frown upon men abusing women. Abuse is abuse and it cannot be accepted. Now, as a matter of fact, I saw a video today where a young lady made the statement that men need to be caring and at the same time, they need to have some street in them. <laughs> well, guess what? Most men don't come from the street, so they wouldn't know what that looks like. Only women from that background would understand her words and look for that kind of guy. She even bragged about the fact that if you're a nice guy, she'd run all over you and that she would actually belittle you, which is abuse. Now, at the same time, she said that if a guy is too street, in other words, he's too hardcore, then she'd snap on him, him also because she's not going to allow anybody to mistreat her. Now, you're talking about a person that sounds confused. So now any guy that with her has to figure out what she considers too soft and when he needs to play hard. Man, that sounds like too much unnecessary work and definitely too much drama. Now, this story takes me to the topic of how did she even get to this point where she believes a man mistreating her at times or that her belittling others is okay. Now, this comes from a topic I learned from Marissa Peer where she teaches familiar versus unfamiliar. Now, it has been said by the age of five, people's personalities have been created. So what you see is what you get. See, if they're carrying kids, they will be carrying adults. If they're selfish, self-centered kids, 
They'll be the same way as adults. Now, what Marissa was sharing is that people duplicate the relationship they had with their parents and take those same beliefs into other relationships, including the one with themselves. So if you spent your time as a child fighting for your parents' attention, you usually take those lessons from that experience. One could possibly be that you're not worthy of love and therefore you must fight hard to get attention so you can feel worthy. This is where that familiar versus unfamiliar conversation comes into play. That particular atmosphere where the lack of attention and love played in those young years of a person's life, that becomes familiar to them. So to get them to love themselves, which is what Self Love Monday is all about, we have to get them to make the unfamiliar familiar and the familiar unfamiliar. What do I mean? Well, when you get into a relationship or you start a relationship where a person gives you immediate attention, that may be unfamiliar. And for a lot of people, it will cause them to run away from the relationship and not fully understand why. You guys have maybe said it or heard it said where people say, he or she is too good for me. Not true. A person treating you good is unfamiliar. You have to learn to make that familiar and where it becomes the only relationship you will accept. You have to make a person that mistreats you and doesn't give you attention unfamiliar. How? Remember we talked about creating a list of what you want in a partner. As I've said, once you create that list, then become that person and only then can you attract the partner you say you desire. See, when it comes to that dream relationship, what would that best partner say to you? How would they treat you? Now talk and treat yourself that way. See, when you send out that energy, that's the energy you will attract back to you. Now, if you're in a current relationship or if you're just dating, ask yourself, how do I feel about myself when I am with him or her? If it is a negative vibe and you realize it is that familiar situation that was created as a youth, it is time to make them unfamiliar and start dating differently. Find someone who makes you feel the way you really want to feel and make that your new familiar. And also at night before bed, practice the mirror exercise that I shared with in the past from Lisa Nichols. Before going to bed, talk to the person in the mirror. And yes, that's you. Number one statement, Ron, I am proud of you for and have seven different endings of that statement. Now, if you repeat an ending, don't worry. The key is the seventh time is the repetition. The second statement is, Ron, I forgive you for in seven endings. This is where we forgive ourselves for the abuse that we've done to ourselves, others, and if we have allowed ourselves to be abused so we can begin the healing. And then the third statement is, Ron, I commit to you in the seven endings. Do this for at least 21 days because that's how long it takes to turn something into a habit. Unless it's an event that happens when you're in a highly emotional state, a habit can be created immediately. Now, remember this tip from Marissa. We make our beliefs and then our beliefs make us. Make sure your beliefs are moving you forward. Now, by the way, on that forgiving yourself, if you are a person that have heard or if you have said to yourself, I'm average looking, I'm an average person, understand that is abuse. This hit me just now because in another video I saw today, there was a guy trying to show support for another gentleman who's labeled a relationship expert because the relationship expert commented to a woman that she was average looking at best. Understand this, what someone calls a five is a 10 to someone else. And someone's 10 is a 5 to someone else. Never allow someone to make their preferences your definition for yourself. And that should never be a conversation that is acceptable to you. The other gentleman stated that sometimes people just have to be told the truth. The truth according to who? Don't listen to that stuff. That is why self-love is so important. Never allow others to define you. You may not like the result. And then keep this in mind. You deserve and can find someone that loves you just the way you are. 
but it starts with you. Learn to have that love affair with yourself as you would the, one, the right partner to have with you. And as you know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on Relationship Thursday, I'll talk with you then. For those on Self Love Monday, I will talk with you next week. Make sure you take the time to visit ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online and see all the things that I got going on. Remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I will talk with you guys soon. Stop the abuse. <laughs> take care.